Presbyterian Church, Reformed Associated Presbyterian Church. I got information I can share with you. All right, would you join me in prayer now? Father, thank you for being with us this morning. Thank you for time to open up your word, to share. Thank you, Father, for your love, for your presence with us. In the name of Jesus, amen. So this morning, we continue our series through the Constitution, and we are at Christian behavior. So number 16, Christian behavior, says, In view of these things, what manner of persons ought we to be? Excuse me. They were falling on me. What manner of persons ought we to be in all holy conversation and godliness? We believe that as Christians we should follow Christ even as he commanded. As followers of Christ, we must abstain from all appearances of evil, ceasing to allow those things which cause our brothers to stumble or be offended or made weak, and at all times seek to walk worthy of the vocations wherewith we are called. That is pretty formal. But what we're talking about is who we are to be, what we are to be, and how we are to show ourselves to this world. So we begin with Matthew 4.19. Matthew 4.19. Then he said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. This is after Jesus has been baptized. This is after Jesus has endured and conquered Satan in a temptation in the wilderness. Now his time of testing is done, and he begins to pick the twelve chosen who will spend three years with him. Jesus chooses his followers with the knowledge that one of them is going to betray him. All of them will doubt and will wonder even after seeing great things. He also knew that when he left this earth, when his mission here was done, when he returned to the Father, they would be the ones tasked with continuing on the work. We follow in the footsteps of those who continued the work after our Savior left. We follow in the footsteps of the apostles and disciples who saw Christ ascend to the Father. Next up is Romans 14.21. It is good neither to eat meat, nor drink wine, nor do anything by which your brother stumbles, or is offended, or is made weak. Now what we have to remember when we look at a verse like this is the early church was made up of a variety of people. It was made up of Jews who accepted Christ as Savior and left the synagogue to start attending church, if you will. It was made up of those who left idol worship when they discovered the saving power of Jesus. It was made up of ordinary people. And I'm going to tell you, it was made up of people just like us. Now, I'm going to just ask a question here. How many of you in here were born in Norwich, Connecticut? Okay, that makes we got a, a total of one. So, I'm assuming some of you were born in different places then. If you weren't born in Norwich, you are born in different places. All right. Now, 
Second question here. How many of you graduated from Norwich Regional Technical School? <laughs> you, you want to, right? You're thinking about it. Yeah. Okay. We come from different places. We have different backgrounds. We are different people. We grew up in different ways. I don't know of anybody else in here who celebrated the Passover every single year. We come from different places. Yet, we are commanded to love, to serve, to be together and show our Lord to this world. Okay? No matter where we started, we gather here as believers in what Jesus has done for us. We have our own thoughts. We have our own feelings. And yet, at times we have to let things go past. So there is something that I've learned in my lifetime, and I'm sure it's probably not a new thought, but Satan has lots of ways that he uses to tear down the church. He doesn't attack just the same way all the time. Our attitude about things, and it is our attitude that I believe makes a difference, but we need to control how we use our attitudes the way we deal with other people. Some churches have destroyed their witness over whether they're going to worship in pews or in chairs. People have left churches over the color of carpet or of music and scripture versions. See, Satan can get into our mind and convince us that if you are not using a particular type of book to read of God, then, then you're wrong. So you've got to go someplace else. Now, you know me, I'm very pro-New King James. That's the Bible that's in the pews. I li believe, believe it or not, I live with a woman who uses Old King James. I mean, talk about, sh I know some of you are shocked. How could this happen? We still get along okay, generally. We survived 16 days in a car together. It works. <laughs> we can get along and we can deal with situations that maybe doesn't make us all feel like we win. But that's okay. It's not about, at the end of the day, my winning or your winning. It's about whether we're glorifying God or not. Because if we're not doing that, we're failing. If God is not first, we are failing. Satan has so much that he can use to tear down. We are to love. The world needs to see our love. It doesn't need to see any more division. We stand strong on the truths of Scripture, and we will never compromise on the authority of God's Word. I'm going to share with you, the Bible is the living Word of God. From Genesis 1-1, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. To Revelation 22:21, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Everything in there is God's word, and we stand on His authority and the authority of God's word alone. It's God's word that we place our trust in. Next, speaking of that, 2 Corinthians 5:20.
Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God were pleading through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. Now something about the word ambassadors here is that this is the only time this word is used in the New Testament. It's used a couple of times in the Old Testament, but in the New Testament, it's used exactly one time here. It's Strong's 4243, and it's from the root word we get presbyterius, or elder. It implies someone who is senior or leader. And I'm not making this up, but it applies, if you look it up in the dictionary, to someone, a preacher or a representative from another country. We are told to represent the law, the Lord. We are to live like we serve and present our Lord always. Not just when we gather together on Sunday mornings, but we are to be living lives where we are ambassadors for the Lord always. Our faith, our belief should be on display all the time for the world to see our Savior. Following right along with this, Ephesians 4.1. Paul speaking here, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you to walk worthy of the calling with which you were called. We are called to salvation, and because of that, to service. Now I have a passage here from the Pillar New Testament commentary that I want to read. It says, on the basis of God's mighty salvation in Christ, the readers are now admonished to lead lives that are in keeping with their high destiny and calling. It is a comprehensive exhortation which covers every aspect of the readers' lives. But God's gracious calling not only bestows great privileges on them, it also carries with it Solemn responsibilities. We are adopted into the family of God to serve. To be ambassadors, representatives, preachers of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I bring that up specifically because one of the things... Billy Graham, well-known man, and I'm just going to bring him up here. When you look at the stone, his headstone, the simple words it says were his name, the dates, a preacher of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's all it says. His tombstone shares what he believed. He preached and presented Jesus Christ. That should be us. We should be living and presenting the Lord. Now the next verse of Scripture, 1 Thessalonians 5.22. Abstain from every form of evil. Now, I know with everything we've already talked about, you're looking at this and you're going, well, this is the easiest one of the whole bunch. All I've got to do is just be perfect. That's all, that's all you have to do to keep this verse. Abstain from every form of evil. Got a bad thought? No, nope, forget it. Get it out of your mind. It can't be there. That would be evil. Done something wrong this week? Forget it. Can't do that. We've got to abstain from every form of evil. I'd, I'd like to share something with you. God knows we're not perfect. And God loves us anyway. Some people, it might be easy to abstain from every form of evil. It's not so much for me. It may not be for you. God doesn't 
I mean, he has no problem with perfection, but he understands us. But what God does desire is our best effort to serve him with a heart set on him and his glory first. And I believe we get right back to attitude here. Our attitude towards each other, our attitude towards the world in general, and even our attitude towards our Father in heaven. God is to be first. We're not just playing some Christian game. Christianity, being a follower of Christ, is not something you do one hour a week and then go, okay, my obligation's done. Now I can live the rest of the week the way I want. We are to be the ambassadors 24-7, 365. God is to be first. Now, I don't know if any of you remember um, a little song, and I don't remember all of it, but the chorus part of it is joy. Jesus first, yourself last, and others in between. Notice I didn't sing it for you. I love you too much to do that. But Jesus first, yourself last, and others in between. That's the way we should be living with our Lord first. We're created in His image. We are important to God. But in His image, we serve Him. And then we serve others. And then we take care of ourselves. We are ambassadors, witnesses of the new life we have in Christ. This entire section in, this, in the Constitution is designed to share us and to show us one thing. When we leave this building, we are still representatives of our Lord. What manner of persons ought we to be? Continuing on with who we are to be, we get to communion this morning. And I'm going to ask the deacons who are going to serve to come forward at this time. I'd like you to look with me at Ephesians chapter 1, verses 3 through 6. This is not, not from the Constitution, obviously, but I believe it fits very well as we get ready to close this out. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ, just as He chose us in Him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before Him in love, having predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to Himself, according to the good pleasure of His will, to the praise of the glory of His grace, by which He made us accepted in the Beloved. We are saved for a purpose. That purpose is presenting our Lord to a world that really, really needs Him. If you've got any doubt about how much this world needs our Lord, five minutes of the five o'clock news will convince you. We're closing singing song number 238, Amazing Grace. We're going to do all four verses of this. We are saved by the grace of our God. None of us deserves the salvation He offers, but it is there because God provides it for us. If you've never accepted the grace that God gives, the salvation He provides, then today I invite you to do that, to make that decision for life eternal. Father, we thank You for Your presence with us, for Your Spirit as He leads us as we serve You. Bless us and guide us as we are Your ambassadors to this world. In the name of Jesus our Savior, Amen.